The state of Franklin, an amazingly compelling story, uh, a story that a lot of people don't know anything about. Some people aren't from this part of the country and they've never heard of it. And they're going, almost the 14th state, what are you talking about? Well, the state of Franklin, like, like any lost cause story, tends to evoke a certain sense of, of romanticism and even some myth and some folklore, and certainly the state of Franklin done that over the years. But what really interests me in the state of Franklin is that it really highlights uh, what makes a particular region special and how people identify with that special quality of uh, being different. When we looked at the story, we did a lot of research, we found that it really was the story of the confrontation between two men, John Tipton and John Sevier. You are no longer governor. The story of the state of Franklin is, is also compelling because of the, the human element. It's interesting when you do the research and you, you read a lot of people, a lot of fascinating folklore, a lot of myth, as well as a lot of facts, and it's kind of, it becomes difficult to separate them. And a lot of people that think they know the story know the myth. They don't necessarily know, you know, the deep history. We put together a panel of experts. Uh, frankly, when you look at them, we have got the leading experts in the world on this period of history. Stylistically, we decided to use a lot of reenactments and reenactors in this to put a face with these characters. And the living historians who came to our aid really, really helped us out so much. One of the most rewarding parts of making this story was getting to know the reenactors. We couldn't afford to hire people like this. They were our best friends. The most knowledgeable people I've ever met, and I'm including, including academia, are reenactors, they are amateur historians that have spent decades researching a single event. To stand up in front of folks and tell stories about the forming of our country is most effective when as they're looking at you, listening to those words, they're picturing you and the way you look in that time. So the, the, the authenticity of the clothing, and they're called accoutrements, our bags, our belts, the knives, the primers, the powder horns, the rifles, everything we have on, each has a story. Not only were the reenactors a valuable part of this, but the whole historic community, the historic sites in our area, we got involved with the things they were doing. We did public service announcements for them to help promote their activities on the local television stations. Uh, in return for doing those kind of favors, they were more than happy to open the doors to let us come in and uh, shoot the scenes that we needed. The majority of the show that we've shot was done right here at Marble Springs, John Sevier's home here in Knoxville, Tennessee. But we also uh, did some, some shooting at Fort Loudon. We did some shooting up at Sycamore Shoals. Our last big shoot was done at Blunt Mansion. It was really, incredible to, to be at a location where we know that Bonnie Kate and John Sevier frequented and visited and they were probably in that very room where we shot that and, and that kind of authenticity, you just can't recreate that anywhere else. We knew we needed Bonnie Kate's dress wardrobe to be very authentic and I was friends with the local jazz singer Kelly Jolly and it was through her Facebook post I realized she was a very talented seamstress. So I approached her and asked if she'd be up for this challenge, and she was, and she did a beautiful job. I had to do a lot of research because I had never um, thought about what fashion was like in the late 1700s. So I looked up all kinds of fashion, even European uh, fashion at that time. So I found a nice brocade curtain, and I really liked it because it had um, like a muted green color and a really pretty, pretty brocade. I wanted to make sure the hat matched the, the dress, so it's covered uh, in pleated uh, brocade curtain fabric, too. When we were thinking about who could portray John Sevier, we only knew of one person who was charismatic enough to pull that off. And at first, he was very reluctant to do this, but then we got Jeff Wells to agree to be John Sevier, and he pulled it off dramatically. 
I couldn't imagine anyone but Philip as John Tipton. Philip is very smart, intense. He's also a historic archivist. He's very passionate about politics and history. And he also had a lot of experience in community theater. And I thought he'd be perfect, and he was. Being John Tipton, it's actually an honor. I learned more than I ever knew about the man uh, after being cast. And uh, I find that history may have given him short shrift, but uh, his legacy is amazing, actually. In my opinion, if Tipton does not oppose the state of Franklin, Tennessee as we know it does not exist. It does not reach to the Mississippi. You will stand here and you will listen to me. No! I am your superior! No! Yes! <laughs> there is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. It begins with research on the topic, getting your cast. We were very fortunate in the people that we worked with being so enthusiastic for the two-year duration. I will see that you will never work in a library another day of your life! Making the transcripts of the scholars' interviews. We had over 100 pages of text. The storyboarding, the shooting, we were willing to wait and go the distance to get the shots that were wanted and needed. We wanted the production to have as good a sound as it had visuals and we were very fortunate to get Seva on board as our audio engineer. Seva, also known as David Ball, did both the narration and the audio mix on this. Seva's been doing audio engineering since the 1970s, and we were very, very lucky to have him on board. So many people hear about a lost state of Franklin, a mysterious lost state of Franklin. There is a lot of mystery, still is a lot of mystery about exactly what it was, how it got started. And answering mysteries like that, I think, help people on a national level understand um, exactly what it is that um, helps one part of the nation define itself. And if you can define one part of the nation well, then you can take that same approach to anywhere else in the country and say, isn't there something here that's special and mysterious and, and helps make you unique? We had over 120 people involved in this production. I mean, that's, that's huge. That's, that's a big deal. And this was all done with people from right here in East Tennessee telling a story of East Tennessee. In true Tennessee volunteer fashion, we got people from all around East Tennessee coming in and lending their expertise to the creation of this show because it really is their story as well. You help the people that are doing the things that you believe in. These guys have passion for what they're doing. You're sitting here tonight watching the result of their passion, watching that stewardship. They have now left a permanent record of a moment in the building of a free and independent country. That's a good thing. <laughs>